I would say probably two of the most common things that we see following traumatic brain injury in our setting um, on the outpatient side are um, irritability, you know, sense of increased irritability, and sleep disorder. And, um, you know, while in general I think a military culture is very averse to medication, people talk about not wanting to be on meds, there is much more openness to alcohol. <laughs> And, um, you know, alcohol is in some sense, uh, well, you know, it's also in some sense the domain of kind of the young, the young male in our culture. I mean, alcohol is sort of pervasive in the 18 to 24 set in terms of um, people's experimentation with being independent and all of that. And so I think it is a much more comfortable and familiar way for people to manage some of their, um, either whether it's physical pain, um, whether it's anxiety, whether it's in difficulty sleeping, you know, you, you drink enough, you can crash and black out and fall asleep. Um, and so there is a sense, I think, of um, sort of this um, disconnect in terms of thinking about what is a substance. But I think that there is an increase in substance use sometimes because it's more familiar, it's more available, seems more socially, culturally acceptable way of managing a lot of the symptoms that go along with, with brain injury. Um, the, in the military culture, it's interesting because you know people get drug screens all the time, and so um, there is sometimes a service member who has a history of substance abuse prior to their service, um, and and then a long period of being clean, and then if they have an injury which involves the use of narcotics, a lot of pain, um, or even just kind of the more psychological pain associated with feeling like you're not yourself, feeling ashamed because you can't remember stuff, you can't take care of yourself. Um, that there can be a renewal of a substance use, um, you know, a relapse of sorts. The other, in terms of sexual health and intimacy, the other um, thing that was new to me is sometimes we find people abusing things like Viagra. Um, and I mentioned previously that sometimes for people, um, they're having sex is the one time they really feel good. And so if they can feel good, they want to feel good. And so sometimes they're, um, you know, using substances to help them be more sexual because it makes them feel good in that sense as well. So so when people use substances like alcohol or um, they're on pain meds, it has a, a, an incredible impact on their, on their sexual functioning, their ability to become aroused, their ability to be intimate with someone because, you know, if they're impaired cognitively because of the use of substances, they can't really build a, a, um, a significant relationship with someone.